On May the 4th, Ontario Ombudsman Paul Dubé issued his report on the Landlord-Tenant Board after an exhaustive two-plus year investigation and report on the broken agency, the broken LTB. The report was shocking. It was shameful. It was damning. Dubé called it a perfect storm. I've been calling it routinely uh, a, a train wreck, although I don't think that's quite fair to wrecked trains. The Ombudsman rejected the Ministry's claims about the cause or causes of the terrible backlogs of the Landlord-Tenant Board. The Ombudsman specifically rejected their claims about appointments, about Doug Ford being the culprit. Tribunals Ontario blamed Ford, but Kathleen Wynne in 2017-18, after she took on the leadership role, she stopped reappointing months and months prior to the 2018 general election. The Ombudsman rejected, at least in part, claims that COVID was the culprit. Certainly the moratorium from March 16th to August the 4th, 2020, was part of the problem. It created a backlog. But applications are way down from almost 81,000 in 2019-20 to just 48,000 in 2020-20. The Ombudsman attributed the train wreck to process, to technology, to administration, to management, to the appointment process, to training, to oversight. In effect, management. Management at the board has been uh, ineffective. If this were the private sector, they'd no longer work there, but this is not the private sector. The queue has not been reduced. In fact, there are now 38,000 applications in the queue, about half a year's worth. Dubé made 61 recommendations, many directed at the agency, at the government of Ontario, and some suggesting to the government that they make legislative changes to the RTA, which would uh, specifically deal with the appointment processes and changes to that process. While Tribunals Ontario has accepted all the recommendations, it's one thing to accept them. Their response, if you read it, shifts responsibility and blame to other places. And accepting the recommendations and actually implementing the, the recommendations, those are two very different things. The Executive Chair of Tribunals Ontario, Sean Weir, and the Executive Director of the Tribunals Ontario, they can't escape blame here. And as I said before, uh, in the private sector, there's some uh, pressure to keep your job, to uh, get pay raises, to not be fired, which don't exist in the public sector, which is one of the reasons that I think that uh, some of these recommendations just won't get implemented or make a difference. Most of the recommendations are about making sure that there's a full complement of properly trained and motivated adjudicators with adequate, adequate support staff. There was some criticism of the cross-appointment process, that is where you appoint adjudicators who then work at multiple tribunals, and a lot of questions about part-time adjudicators, people with full-time jobs in some cases, questioning their ability to handle the workload, getting the orders out, putting things in priority to their own full-time job. The appointment and the reappointment process, that is the appointment of adjudicators, which is a political process, was found to be in need of vast improvement and was in some ways the root of the problem, uh, the timing issues with respect to appointments and getting through the process and advising adjudicators that their appointment might be over and the stress that that puts on them, uh, not knowing whether the appointment will be renewed for another term. Members' morale, uh, because of the appointment process and because of the workload, uh, received some scrutiny. Now, members were interviewed and spoke candidly to the ombudsman. You need to be careful reading the report about his observations uh, that came from interviews with actual adjudicators of the board. There's a tendency to say things that are self-serving, knowing that some of the things you say are going to affect policy. So take everything with a grain of salt. Same thing with the IT system. Investigation and, and the ministry are, are blaming and, and took issue with some of the technological shortcomings. And I think that uh, IT consulting companies are going to be very happy with this report because there's going to be lots of work for them. But again, take any suggestions by staff that it's all about the IT system uh, with a big grain of salt. While delays were addressed and considered the biggest single issue, particular focus was given on the failure, complete failure of the expedited hearing process to actually function. That is, if there is violence, if there's impaired safety, uh, if there's a health issue, if there's an issue about a real estate closing, those are supposed to receive 
quicker hearing times through this expedited process where you can make a request on a form. In fact, the ombudsman found in some cases submitting that form actually slowed down the process of getting a hearing. So there were many recommendations to amend and properly monitor that process. Tribunal Ontario's new case management system and the online portal was the subject of a lot of criticism. It was introduced prematurely in, uh, I guess it was early 2022, and there were hundreds of bugs upon introduction that made it so difficult for myself, colleagues, and the general public to use the system. Some applications were saved, but they weren't really saved, and you'd wonder for months, where is my hearing notice? And then you'd found out, well, we don't even have it. My own observation is that they didn't do any field testing. They could have used one of the big paralegal companies and said, look, we'd like you to field test this thing so that we can get the bugs out, but that never happened. The application screening process where the public or professionals file applications and then the board screens them, well, it took uh, a lot of criticism as well. The ease at which fatal flaws could be made by generally the landlord where an application could be filed and found to be defective after waiting for seven months for a hearing and having to start all over again. So there was some criticism there. Uh, there needs to be more information about the things that might invalidate a notice or an application. The ombudsman was particularly critical in the amount of time tenant applications would go unheard. There could be years between the filing of a tenant application and the actual hearing. So if the application was about unsafe conditions uh, or about substantial interference with their enjoyment, those matters were going unaddressed for years. Of particular frustration to parties and paralegals has been the large number of rehearings. We call them hearings de novo in the last two years. This happens because members resign without issuing orders, uh, sometimes after extensive hearings take place involving multiple sittings. Imagine taking 18 months. Uh, you file the application, you get a hearing, you don't finish, you come back again, it doesn't finish, you come back again, finally it's finished, you're waiting for your order, and six months later you find out the order was never written, and the whole thing has to be heard by a new adjudicator because the adjudicator has left. Virtual hearings and technology issues were examined and again critiqued. Several recommendations were made to try and improve in that area so that some people don't get lost in the digital divide. Uh, certainly having proper technical support, making sure that on the day of hearings there are people who can make sure that matters get heard and that people get heard rather than somehow get cut off and uh, found to be uh, have abandoned the application and not appeared. The Ombudsman took issue with data tracking in many areas, whether it was for adjournments, requests for expedited hearings, data tracking for long outstanding orders, time to hearing, etc. All of these uh, recommendations to improve those things were included in uh, Dubé's recommendations. Here's my favorite recommendation, number 58. And I think it gets to the root of the problem going forward. Here it's, here's what it said. The Government of Ontario, the Ministry of the, the Attorney General, Tribunals Ontario, and the Landlord-Tenant Board should work together to develop and implement a strategy for reducing the backlog of the board as soon as possible. Well, gee, that's great. And we knew that three years ago. But how do you do it? And that really brings us uh, to, the, to the issue, what happens with the 61 recommendations. It's the same staff implementing those changes who mess things up royally, either by action, inaction, neglect. It's the same culture at the LTB that landlords uh, generally um, have to be perfect and tenants could be far less than perfect. And in fact, grossly imperfect in their conduct, in their submissions, their filings and yet the landlords are punished for it, but the tenants are not. What's really needed in addition to these procedural changes is a legislative overhaul and a, an overhaul in the, in the training of staff, the, the outlook towards landlords and tenants, uh, the balance uh, and the mindset of adjudicators and staff vis-a-vis -vis landlord versus tenant balance. There needs to be changes to the RTA to provide tenants with fewer opportunities to use the system, whether it's phony set-asides, phony pay-ins, phony adjournments, phony reviews, phony appeals. There needs to be a mechanism where termination notices can be deemed to be correct if there are only minor errors in the notice instead of sending somebody home and having them start again. British Columbia 
in their Residential Tenancies Act has a provision that deems dates that are slightly incorrect to be correct and not invalidate the whole process. Only time will tell about these terrible backlogs, but with the terrible economy, a chat GPT, GPT which is stealing away jobs, which will create uh, problems with people paying rents, the rising rental rate, particularly in the GTA, which makes it tough for uh, people who are in the retail sector, the service sector, to, to live in Toronto and pay rents. A recession that probably hasn't ended. An increased hostility between landlords and tenants. I wouldn't be expecting much improvement in the near future. We shall see. I hope you've enjoyed this summary. For information about training for landlords uh, in applications, in hearing process, in starting a tenancy, in rent control, every topic under the RTA, go to my website at landlordtraining.ca and there's lots of information for you. Thank you.